I'm going to give Jill a bit of a clean out and a little bit of TLC <clears throat> because she's not been playing ball very much lately. So I'm going to start by unplugging from the mains. It is switched off anyway, but I always just unplug from the mains. <clears throat> and I'm going to take my presser foot off. And I'm going to take my needle out as well. Um, I always just tend to replace the needle whenever I've done a clean out or so. Um, just stuck. Um, just so that I know it's been done. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually, because it's quite sort of dusty, around the front is I'm just going to give all the bits that you can kind of see on the outside I'm just going to make sure that there's no bits of thread or anything in amongst the tension discs so you can see there's actually quite a bit it's, I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and zoom in. Yeah. I'll actually zoom. I'll actually leave it on that because you can see it a little bit better as well. So, I'm going to also take out my bobbin. And I'm going to take off my needle plate as well. usually quite a good idea as well if you've got a spare little dish or anything like that to actually um you know place place all the, place all the bits that you're taking off um in a little dish and it keeps them all all safe and secure and in the same place so i always just give the back of my needle plate a quick brush as well check for any damage so what I've got obviously I've got um, this brush is just a brush that I got with one of my machines it could have been this one I'm not 100% sure I obviously got my little screwdrivers that I use um, I've got some of these sort of swabs these are brilliant for cleaning the machines I've also got some sewn oil normal sewn oil and this is a one with um, a very long sort of nozzle so that I can get in to places that aren't normally easy to get into so I'm just kind of going to move all of these out of the way for now and I'm just going to turn the machine around and let's see if I can bring in a little bit more and I'm just going to get some tissues as well and I'm using these swabs to just get in and clean out all of the the fibers and actually you wouldn't believe it but it's not actually that long since this was since this one was done um i have seen people doing using the air in a can i actually don't like to use the air in a can because I just feel that it just blows the dust and the threads actually into the machine as opposed to getting them out. 
so I'm going in between my feed dogs and if you feel confident you can let me do this screwdriver you can take your feed dogs off as well I don't know whether mine are too tightly yeah, I'm going to have to do that another day when I can get Grumpy to unfasten them because they are really tightly screwed on. So I'm just literally wherever I can, I can see, I'm going in with this swab. And just getting as much of this fluff either out or dislodged because what will happen is it will fall down into this bit here as well and I'm just gonna clean around my, my bobbin holder, I don't actually know what that's probably called. I'm probably not, not the best person to, to do this because I don't actually know what what anything is called. I just usually call it the thingy majiggies and the whatchamacallits. But in all fairness, most people know what I'm talking about. I've got a little tiny build up of excess oil in the edge here these swabs are great because they're quite long so you can really get in with them i'm going to bin that one and start with a new one actually that wasn't as bad as what I thought it was going to be initially it looked way worse on the top than anywhere else so while I have this open I'm just going to give one drop inside my bobbin case and a couple of drops just round the what what is under the needle plate and then I will just put some extra oil in where the holes are as well so that's just going to get fastened back down So that is all of the bottom bobbin case cleaned. I do just give the inside of my bobbin holder a little clean round. You can see I don't actually have the spring in mine. I don't know if you can, if you can see that. See if I can get it to focus. Um, I actually take the spring out of mine because I use a slightly thicker thread um, and I actually find that even when I'm using a normal thread it's actually fine without that spring in it. I had more problems with the machine with the spring in so I basically I took it out. 
after I'd forked out for another bobbin holder, which was about 60 quid as well. And I found out the problem was actually just the spring. But hey ho, that's fine. Um, I have a spare bobbin holder. So I'm just gonna literally play, place a drop in, in there. And this machine needs to be oiled each time you use it. So you should be putting a dot of oil in each of these holes here. If you can see that very well. This hole here and this hole here. And then oh, wait. and then there's a hole here and a hole here which is just out of the view of the camera but it's just a bit, little bit further along drop of oil in each of those two as well each time you use it what I tend to do especially if I've used the machine quite a bit is I'll just put a tiny little bit using this one which has got like a needle in it and it's a much smaller drop is when I've been using it if I've used it quite a bit I'll actually just put, pop a drop in when I've finished using it because it's warm and it'll kind of run through better um, and then I know that it's been done as well and then I'm not forgetting to do it the next time I come to use it. If I haven't used the machine in a few days I'll, I'll pop another little drop in just before I start using it as well to be on the safe side. It is a machine that needs oiling um, quite a bit. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this side. I'm going to I'm just going to move the machine around slightly, um, and I'm going to remove this side and just check there's no fluff or anything in there. Two sets. So I've just moved it around and zoomed in a little bit so I'm just going to take this screw out I don't touch anything on the the top um, when I'm giving the machine a clean I would leave that to you know, somebody who was experienced in um, like servicing the machines and what have you so all I'm basically doing is I'm just basically checking that there's not sort of a lot of fluff or anything um, in, in this part here that's moving up and down um, so it's not actually that long since I cleaned this out and it was it did have a, like quite a bit of fluff in it so it's actually really it's really clean now um and since not that long it's maybe it's a couple of months ago but it was the first time i'd done that completely since i got the machine which was i don't know 2019 2020 something like that um so yeah so i'm just just basically making sure that there's no I mean there is it is still quite you know a bit fluff in it there you can see and I'm just gonna pop a dot of oil directly into those two holes there and just one on the bottom And I just kind of turn my wheel just to distribute that oil. So that's all really clean, spick and span. And I'm just going to pop this back on. If I hadn't dropped the screw. There we go. It's actually really quite hard to do with long nails. My nails are so much longer than they would be normally. So I am struggling a little bit. So I just line this up, pop the screw in, 
try and keep it in place so I can get the screwdriver in. Making sure it's all lined up. Sometimes it just takes a little bit until you can find where it where it needs to grab. And there should be a little washer. I don't know whether you can you can see behind there there's a little washer that sits behind that screw in this sort of recess here too. So that's all put back together and I'm just going to pop, I'll come back out so you can see where I've. So in this hole here and in this hole here I've just dropped one drop of oil as well and then I'm just checking back in here where I've where I've cleaned a few bits out there's a a few little stray bits of fluff around that edge so I know that that's all nice and clean so I can pop my And pop my bobbin back in pop my plate back on and I can get a new needle out and pop a new needle in So I would tend to put the needle in while the foot's out because it just makes it a little bit easier. Just tighten that up. Obviously making sure that you've got the flat bit facing the right way. You can't actually really put it in the wrong way. It doesn't, it doesn't let you. Um, just giving this foot a little tiny touch for clean because it is absolutely full of little bits of fluff as well so that's going back on nice and neatly and that is basically how I clean the machine down I tend to just do underneath I do try to do it at least once a week um, because the machine does get a lot of use this side bit I'll do once every few months as you saw it wasn't it wasn't dirty or anything um, it you know it wasn't so I can just see a little bit of dust still there um, it, it wasn't it wasn't dirty at all in there there wasn't lots of fluff and what have you in there so i just check it sort of like once every few months or so but this bit every week um if it gets left longer than that you're probably going to have issues it's not going to like it um and it takes a lot more cleaning when you do it once a week you'll get really quick at doing it obviously i've kind of slowed down how i do it because i'm showing you but you know it literally takes me five ten minutes to, to to give it a good clean underneath and um you know just make sure that it's okay so i'm just gonna sit it back in my table so i'm gonna plug it back in first in the table and I'm going to thread it and just make sure that it's sewing all okay. So I'm going to see if I can zoom you in a little bit and actually show you how 
how I thread it. Give me two seconds. So hopefully you can see. So it comes up through the thread holder at the back and through the little loop that's right next to the thread holder. And then we're going to go through these three holes here. Now I'll go through the first hole and then bring it back on itself. So I'm going back to front and then I come through the last hole. I don't thread through the middle hole and I'm going through back to front, round to the back and then back to the front again. And then I'm coming through these tension plates and then through this tension plate here and then there was a little like spring hook I'm not really sure what you'd call it but it gets threaded through the back of that so basically when you come round when you come round this tension disc you want to basically keep on going and then just make sure that it's hooked into this little wire here and then we're going to come underneath this hook here and then there's like a little arm here so you want to hook it behind there and you just want to make sure that that is in the top position ideally you'd make sure that it was in the top position before you started thread it through this hole so you're going right to left I had to think about it then because I don't know my left from my right and then you're hooking it back through this arm again that we hooked it through before so you're going back through that you've then got this little hole here which it hooks into and then hooks behind this sort of I can't actually think of what the name of it is there is a proper name for it but it's basically the the little arm that sort of hugs the needle you go in behind that and then you're threading from left to right And then hooking your bobbin thread up. So I don't know if you can see that fully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the machine on. And oh, there it is. Um, actually, I'm going to get another little piece because that piece I was testing rivets on earlier on. So I always test with a little bit of vinyl um, because that's what I saw mostly so I'm just going to fold it in half pop it under the foot and do a couple of test rows so I'm going to do one test row at about two and a half which is what I construct at And just check I'm happy with that and then I'm going to change it to about four four and a half which is what I top stitch at and just check that stitch as well and yeah I'm really happy with both of those stitches I don't actually know whether it's going there focus is it gonna focus this camera is an absolute blooming mare. So that's kind of making sure that my stitching is a okay. And then what I'm going to do, last but not least, is just give it a good 
wave over to get rid of any excess oil. And there we go. All cleaned out, all re-oiled and stitching perfectly. And now, because she is a little bit temperamental, she fits in well. So anyway, hope you found that helpful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to see my next video when it's released. I'll see you next time.